This is a quick video tutorial for how to draw an ER diagram or ERD. These stand for Entity Relationship Diagrams and are sometimes also called ER models. First things first, let's dig into entities. Entities are simply the nouns of your diagram. So in this case, that's the apparel size, the product, the color, the categories. I'm going to show you another example of an Entity Relationship Diagram that uses a different format. Here, entities are still represented with rectangles. So in this case, it's the customer, their mobile phone provider, their login, and the bill. All of those are nouns associated with the system. So the first step in making your own entity relationship diagram is to determine the entities in your system. Using Gliffy, all you have to do is drag and drop your rectangles onto the canvas. It's super easy. One tip for thinking about entities is that each entity in your diagram would have its own spreadsheet in this system that you're building. Next, you'll need to determine your attributes. These are the adjectives in your system. There are two ways to represent adjectives or attributes. And in this case, every attribute is listed out under the entity. You can drag these blocks onto the canvas if you want to use this format, and you just type for each attribute and that block will expand or drop down to fit your full list of attributes. This format is great for saving space. But if you're trying to do a relatively high level overview, a format like this one might be better. In this case, each attribute is represented with an oval. So let's zoom in and look at the customer. Here we have the customer as the entity and we're collecting their phone number, their customer ID, the city they live in, their name and the amount paid. This would be like the columns in your customer's entity spreadsheet. So for step two, you'll simply drag in your attributes as ovals or use that rectangle format that lists them out under the entity. Up here is an example of what it looks like if you're building the first. And then here's an example of what it'll look like if you're building the second. As you can see, this is much more condensed and carries a lot of information in a small amount of space, but this version can be more helpful if you're trying to show someone what information is available and make all those attributes really stand out. Jumping back to this example, now we have to determine the relationships. These are depicted in different ways as well. In this example, the relationships are simply shown by lines. In our other example, however, you'll see that each relationship has a diamond. So if you're doing this more blown out version, you're going to drag in diamonds to document what interaction is taking place between each entity. In this example, you can see that the relationship or the verb happening here is orders. So what this diagram tells us is that we have the customer, we're collecting this information about the customer and they order a ticket. Then we collect this information about the ticket. Over here, you have the ticket and then all the information about what you're storing. Last, we need to determine the cardinality of each of these relationships. This is the final step for your ER diagram. If you're using this format, all you have to do is add the notation to the side that's relevant. If you're using this other format, you're going to drop that relationship in the middle on this line. That notation is relatively consistent across entity relationship diagrams. We'll zoom in over here so that you can see. So for zero or many, you can see that we have this little circle that looks like a zero and then this pronged thing that shows many. One is just a vertical line. So here's one or many, one mandatory, sometimes called one and only one, a simple one, zero or one, and then many. So again, this notation just kind of looks like exactly what it represents. What all that looks like in practice is simply dragging these guys out, selecting the relationship that you'll draw between them, connecting it to each shape, and then typing that relationship orders. That's everything you need to know to make your own ER diagram in Gliffy. And then this sounds obvious, but have someone else check your work. 
So what's happening is you have all these nouns, which are the entities, the adjectives, which are the attributes, and the verbs, which are relationships. That's basically everything you need to make a complete sentence. If you know how to read an entity relationship diagram, you should be able to easily jump between entities and say, yep, the customer purchases the phone. That means that if you show this diagram to someone who can also read an ERD and they aren't able to quickly form those sentences or explain the relationships, there's space to clarify. That might mean restructuring your diagram a little bit, making sure you're not missing information from one entity that you're going to want to reference in another, and keeping track of what data you're collecting so that you can make sure everything is represented. As long as you have someone who can quickly say, yep, this is something we want to build, you can feel great about your ER diagram. And if you've used software like Gliffy, you can easily go back and make tweaks or edits to keep your diagram up to date. Happy diagramming!